Scientists have an embarrassing problem. They don't know what 95% of the universe is made of. Put another way, ordinary matter, such as the atoms in your body, make up only about one-twentieth of all the matter and energy in space. The rest is in two forms that we can't see. The first is dark matter, which we'll deal with another time. The second is dark energy, which according to current estimates accounts for just over two-thirds of all the energy there is. The discovery of dark energy goes back to the late 1990s. A team of astronomers found that distant supernovae, the remains of stars that have exploded, were moving away from us faster than expected. It's been known since the 1920s that the universe is expanding, but it was always assumed that this expansion was slowing down because of all the objects in space pulling on each other through gravity and acting as a cosmic break. Scientists thought that the universe would eventually either reverse its expansion and come back together, or would expand forever, but at a rate that gradually slowed down. These new observations of supernovae showed that not only was the universe expanding, but that the rate of expansion was accelerating. That could only mean one thing. There was some effect working in the opposite direction to gravity and very quickly this effect became known as dark energy. But exactly what is it? In 1915, Einstein published his general theory of relativity, a new theory of gravity. One of the things predicted by it is that the universe must be either expanding or contracting. Now, Einstein didn't like this idea. He wanted the universe to be static. So he introduced into his equations a term called the cosmological constant. It was really a fudge factor, meant to cancel out the effects of gravity so that the universe would stay the same size. After it was discovered that the universe really is expanding, Einstein said the cosmological constant was the biggest blunder of his life. But was it? One of the leading theories about dark energy today is that actually it's the cosmological constant. In other words, it's a fundamental property of space, energy that exists in a vacuum and exerts a negative pressure. This negative pressure opposes gravity and works to pull the universe apart. It's an attractive theory because it fits in not only with Einstein's general theory, but also with theories about how matter and energy behave at a very small scale, so-called quantum field theories. The trouble is, these theories predict a cosmological constant that's way larger than what's observed. Another possibility is that dark energy is something known as quintessence. The name comes from the fifth element of classical theories about the universe, the element in addition to earth, air, fire and water that existed only in the heavens. A big difference between quintessence and the cosmological constant is that it can change over time and vary from one place to another. One form of quintessence that's been proposed is phantom energy, which increases in strength over time and might even lead to the terrifying possibility of a big rip, where the fabric of the universe is torn apart with the destruction of everything in it. But don't lose too much sleep over it. It could happen only in the very far future, even assuming that phantom energy is real. In fact, there are still some astronomers who doubt the existence of dark energy and suspect that future observations will show that we've made a mistake or that we live in an unusually empty part of space that's made us misinterpret the supernova data. There are lots of unanswered questions about dark energy. You can read more about the subject at the Dark Energy page of my website, The Worlds of David Darling, and if music is more your cup of tea, I've written a song called Dark Energy, which you can listen to in another video on this channel. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more adventures in science, maths, and music.